and liftoff of Artemis 1. We rise together. Just an incredible display of power and math and science as well. NASA finally launched its most powerful rocket yet into space early this morning. The unmanned spacecraft will fly around the moon and back following two unsuccessful attempts over the past several months. But joining us now to give us more details on the historic launch that was a success is Matt Kaplan. He is the host of Planetary Radio for the Planetary Societies. Thanks so much for being here. Um, so even though Artemis finally took off today, its launch was technically delayed because we were looking at it happening yesterday. And tell us why the delay and why is it so significant that it was finally successful in doing so? Well, thank you, first of all. It's an exciting morning for uh, those of us who uh, work with space exploration. Um, the delays were fairly minor. The first one that we heard about was a minor hydrogen leak. It was a more major hydrogen leak, several of them, that caused those delays back in August when I had hoped to see the launch uh, down at uh, the Cape. That didn't oh. happen. The rocket was rolled back for repairs. Uh, the other uh, problem last night, or this morning actually, was not NASA's fault, not part of the rocket. It was actually Space Force. The U.S. Space Force had a problem with a uh, network connection that meant it wouldn't be able to track the rocket as it lifted off of the pad the first part of its journey. Well, Space Force was able to take care of that, and uh, we saw the result. They just need higher internet speeds, apparently. Even NASA <laughs> deals with these things. Um, that's remarkable. A lot, a lot of jokes about replacing a network cable. Yeah, right, yeah, right. just give you, it a you, kick. You turn it off, unplug <laughs> exactly. it, wait 10 seconds, plug it's it back the same, in. It's the same in space. <laughs> uh, but do explain for us, Matt, why this launch in particular is so significant for NASA and what it lays the foundation for. It really is uh, tremendously important for NASA and its international partners. This rocket has a history that goes back to the George W. Bush administration. It has been in, develop with, in development since then with billions of dollars going into it. It is the core of NASA's plans to uh, allow humans to return to the moon, as they like to say, the first woman and the next man to uh, set foot on the moon. Um, and probably to get a lot of other things done. It's also a part of the beginning of our effort to get humans to Mars. And so um, they wanted to get this absolutely right. That's why they were so careful with this. And so far, so good. It is absolutely uh, doing a great job. Only very minor problems reported so far as it makes its way to the moon. And uh, if this is successful, it opens up the route to Artemis II, mm -hmm. which will be another, sorry, no, I, I was just like, yes, I'm excited about all this, Matt. <laughs> Artemis II, 2024, I'm looking forward to that. But, but I'm hoping that you can actually tell us about the significance, because I'm, I'm excited every time we have a space story, as everybody knows around me. But, um, but there are some people who wonder, why is it important to return to the moon? Why is it important for us to try and get to Mars? Explain to folks who maybe are a little bit less excited than Well, especially than considering us. the expense. Right why this why this needs to be a goal for humanity and of course these are questions that have been asked since even before the apollo program that last took humans to the moon there are a lot of good answers to that question for one thing learning about the moon learning about the other worlds in our solar system we learn about ourselves the moon is basically a giant uh, archaeological site uh, uh, our geological site that can tell us about the early development of Earth. Because while Earth has been changed a lot over the last few billion years, the moon has not. Uh, that's one reason. We also see the tremendous inspiration that missions like this provide, especially to young people. We also see tremendous technological developments and encouragement for the the burgeoning commercial space sector here in the United States and around the world. So there are a lot of reasons for this. And that's why uh, one reason NASA uh, has contractors all over the country, I believe in every single one of the 50 states. Hmm. Uh, they all have a piece of this, uh, of this Artemis program. There's a reason why there is the expression reach for the stars. Yeah, even if it's a stuffed Mars behind your left shoulder, <laughs> reach for it anytime. <laughs> oh, Matt Kaplan, what a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. Thank you.